All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us at Mystic Fitness. We're on Victory Field this morning. We have a good group of people, so please get yourself ready to join us virtually. If you're out there, go ahead and say good morning, say how are you. Uh, we miss you guys, and we can't wait to see you next time. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. So uh, one of the most important is that these uh, weekday uh, morning classes are going to be transitioning back to 9 a.m. starting next Monday, the 28th. And that means that we're going to be doing it live streamed as well as on Victory Field, 9 a.m. every weekday morning. Um, and then again on the weekends, 9 a.m. And this will be a little bit warmer, so you'll still have to bundle up, but make sure you bring all the gear that you need. You can always take off a layer, and if you don't have one, you're going to be a little chilly. So make sure you bring a couple of sweaters for yourself, definitely a hat to keep your head warm. And the sun has been out for us most of the week. It's a little shy this morning, but we'll get there. Uh, thank you guys for your continued support. We really appreciate it, and we'll go ahead and get started. So come into a comfortable position, either seated or reclined, maybe a child's pose, whatever is welcome to your body this morning. And allow your eyes to close. And then let breath start to take over. And inhale. And exhale. Using this breath to allow your physical body to relax, as well as your emotional and mental body to join you as well. It's almost like we're getting ready to climb aboard a boat. But this time, this boat doesn't have a motor or a paddle. We're just simply going to use the current to carry us from one place to the next. And these waters are safe. And no matter which direction you go, you will find your next destination. And we're using this as a metaphor for the mind and our practice. So the mind is the motor. We want to turn all of that thought off and allow the current of our breath to take us from one movement to another. So just imagine yourself floating going in the direction of the wind. Taking five more breaths here, in and out. As your breath continues to expand, slowly start to wiggle the toes and fingers, expanding your lungs, maybe growing even taller within the spine, perhaps reaching the arms up overhead and finding a full body stretch, maybe a little movement through the wrists, opening and closing the hands, rolling the wrists in one direction and then in the other direction. Giving the hands a good shake, getting rid of any tension that's still building here. 
And if you're not already in a seated position, taking your time to arrive there, we will, we will start class together. And once there, bringing your hands over your heart, maybe together in prayer position or over your own chest. And in this moment, perhaps the current leads you to an intention for the rest of your class. Perhaps the intention this morning is simply just to be immersed within the moment. We'll begin class with the sound of Om, starting with a cleansing breath to prepare. Inhale and exhale. And for Om, inhale. Oh. The first breath after Om symbolizes a bright new beginning. Let's go ahead and transition into our table pose. Take your time to arrive if you need any little wiggles or waggles before getting there. The wrists stack below the shoulders, knees below the hips. With the inhale, arching the spine, letting the chest open towards the front of the room. And with the exhale, curling and rounding, pressing the floor away, really arching through the spine. Inhale, taking you back open. Exhale, curling and rounding into it. And what I want you to pay attention to here is with each breath, can you make this become expansive a little more and more each time? So again, coming to this metaphor of being aboard this boat that has no motor, you're just relying on the current of breath to move you in and out of each posture. Notice the contrast of what it's like to arch the spine and what it's like to curl the spine. We have some amazing students with us today. You can take a look into your device at any point to take a note from them. And because it is a little bit chillier out now, we have to do even more to make sure that our bodies are accurately warmed up. So eventually this motion is going to start to turn into some side to side wiggles, maybe some semi-circles towards the back of your mat or full pelvic bowl rotations in one direction and then in the other direction. Kind of viewing this almost like a dance, just this opportunity to fully unleash that creative energy within you let it flow naturally just like your breath when your body is ready taking those rotations or movements in the opposite direction making sure we get that even stretch through both sides of our body and along the way you might notice some tight locations that need a little extra love and breath and this is your practice, so you have time. Letting these motions carry you back into a child's pose for a couple breaths. Knees can be close together or far apart. Arms can be in any direction or position that suits you. If it's too early for your child's pose, can always engage in more movement. Take this moment to kind of recalibrate within the mind. Notice if you're still a little distant and try to pull yourself back to this present moment. Throughout class, this is a pose that you can take to refocus and recenter. And physically, we are bowing down. So there is power to this pose. There is also surrender to this pose. Can you find that happy medium between surrender and power?
Eventually coming back up into your table pose. Taking your time to get there, finding a nice flat back. And then extending the right leg behind you. You can keep the toes on the ground to start and find a couple back and forth presses. So shifting the hips forward and back. We're gonna get a beautiful elongation through the hamstring as well as the calf and the arch of the foot. Two locations that we tend to not really pay attention to. And then from this location, start to lift those right toes up off of the ground to keep a flexed foot to active. If you like, maybe that left arm extends for the front of the room. This is your extended table. This is an inhale. Your exhale is pulling of the knee and elbow into the chest. Inhale, expand, use the glute. Exhale, curl in. Five more, one. Two, three, four, and five. Hold in that extension for three, two, one. Land back in your table pose. Let the hips walk, rock from side to side a couple times. And then extend the left toes behind you, keeping the toes planted on the ground at first so you can find those back and forth presses. Notice the stretch you're getting through the calf and the arch of the foot. Our feet are always stuck in shoes all day, so it feels really nice to get some movement through that location, very tight area. Once you're ready, coming back to center, lifting those left toes up off the ground with a flexed foot. Perhaps that right arm extends forward. Squeeze the glute here. Inhale. Exhale, knee to chest. Curl it in. Here we go. Inhale and exhale for five, four, three, two, one, hold in that extension. Feel that left glute squeeze for three, two, one, and release. Table pose. Take any little movements you need here. Maybe coming into an arched spine, pressing the floor away and shaking the head, yes and no. Notice how the body is creating its own fire. And our next destination will be downward facing dog. So tuck those toes under and lift the hips up and back. Letting your hips shift the weight towards the back of your mat, fingers towards the front of your mat. Relax the head and shake it yes and no. Maybe start to pedal out your feet, walking your dog, lifting one heel up off of your mat at a time. Notice the gentle stretch through the hamstrings that you can access here. And let's continue to fire this body up within this little chilly feel. We want to get our bodies nice and warm. So coming into some back and forth presses. So with the inhale, we're going to bend the knees to a hover hips, pull up and back. Exhale to your plank pose. Inhale, take it up and back. Bend knee dog, create a little elasticity. Exhale to your plank pose. Take a couple more of these here as slow or as fast as you like. Notice how it's almost like a little leapfrog-like motion. We're warming up the inner thighs, the abdominal muscles. And this is where it becomes really interesting to see how you are in control of your own heat. The next time you come into that plank pose, pause and hold. Make sure those shoulders are stacked upon wrists. Crown is reaching forward, heels are pressing back. Imagine my hand is on your shoulders and I'm asking you to press into my hand for three, two, one. Lower the knees to the ground, inhale. With the exhale, lower the chest all the way down with those elbows pointing back, chaturanga. Inhale for a low cobra, peel the chest up, elbows come towards the 
body and exhale release let's find one more low cobra inhale use that back strength to pull your chest lift your chin and exhale release transitioning back into your table pose and then tucking the toes under downward facing dog that is our first style of chaturanga letting those knees stay lowered we'll run through our second version of chaturanga so inhale bend the knees gaze forward exhale walk or hop to the front of your mat forward fold pause here for a moment with a deep bend in the knees perhaps you want to grab onto opposite elbow coming into a ragdoll pose maybe some other variation is calling your name perhaps bringing the elbows or forearms on top of the thighs for a little shelf to support some of your upper body weight Coming back to that metaphor of the current carrying us rather than letting our motor kind of kick on and tell us where to go. We have enough of that in our life, being told what to do, where to go, who to talk to, what to say. This is your opportunity to let that creative expression just flow. As you bring the fingertips towards the shins, inhale to a strong halfway lift and exhale surrender soften fold let's find one more halfway lift inhale active pose squeeze the belly in exhale fold this time take that energy all the way up to the sky let the fingertips reach up to the clouds and exhale pull that energy towards heart center pause here breathe in feel the length within the spine Feel as if you're this tall tree, letting your leaves reach up and roots pull down. Inhale, arm circle, sweep up overhead. Exhale, hinge from the hips, forward fold, bend in the knees. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Hands plant, stepping back to that strong plank pose we established just a few minutes ago. Heels press back, crown reaches forward, squeeze the belly, squeeze the glutes, breathe in, choose to keep those knees lifted or lower them back to the ground. And with the exhale, find your chaturanga, elbows point back, inhale, upward facing dog or coming back to that low cobra and exhale, downward facing dog. Couple breaths here as you pause in your downward facing dog just a couple of quick notes for our upward facing dog we want to make sure those hips and knees and thighs are lifted up off the ground we have to squeeze our glutes and abdominals to do that on your next in breath reach the right leg up and back we're going to pause here i'm going to do a quick little demo for my friends here what we're going to come into is a three leg dog and then we're going to extend forward to a three leg plank so inhale, take it up and back, three leg dog. Exhale to your plank. Two more. Inhale and exhale plank. Last one, make it count. And exhale plank. Return back to that three leg dog, bend the knee, dial open the hip. Pause here, maybe a little bending and extending is calling your name rather than holding a static pose. Square the hips, send the right toes behind you, inhale, exhale, curl the knee into the chest, step to your runner's lunge. In your runner's lunge, you can pause here. You can always drop that left knee to the ground if that feels more comfortable for you. We're going to come into a runner's lunge hover, so start to pull the crown forward, arms reach back with the palms facing down. Go ahead and flip the palms the opposite direction just to know why we're doing that. Do you feel your shoulders externally rotating as the palms face down? So let's hold there. Feel that control of the left heel pressing back, right heel pressing into the earth for three, two, one. Inhale, rise to your crescent lunge. Pause here. Find a slight bend and tucking of the left knee to keep the pelvis below you. Inhale, lift up and rise. With the exhale, dip and twist to the right. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, dip and twist to the right. Three more. In. 
and twist. Two. And one. Hold in that twist. Dip and squeeze the glutes. Press the pelvis a little bit more forward. Open your chest. Left rib cage twisting over to the right for three, two, one. Inhale, lift up. With the exhale, dial left heel down. Open yourself up, warrior two. Take a moment to establish this warrior two stance. You want to bend to that front right knee, but not past the ankle. So make sure the joints are stacked here. The outer edge of that left foot is working hard here. So imagine my foot is pressing up against the left edge of your foot, of your back foot. Press into my foot. So feel as if you're ripping the mat apart with your feet. Hold here. Feel that warrior energy. Notice how the mind wants to keep moving. Inhale, lengthen through the right leg. Bring the fingertips up overhead. With the exhale, fingertips come from behind the head and open back up, warrior two, bend through right knee. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, warrior two. In and out. Lifting back up one more time. With the exhale, coming into the best warrior two you can make. Flipping right palm. Inhale, reverse that warrior. Feel the opening through the right side of the body. With the exhale, cartwheel hands down, coming back to your runner's lunge. Hands plant, right foot steps back to meet left. Plank pose. Maybe you hold in a three-legged plank and that right leg stays lifted. Breathe in together. And exhale, slowly lower, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. You guys are amazing. You all found that three-legged plank. Pause here, recollect your breath. Inhale, left leg sweeps up. Now pause here. We're going to come in and out of that three-legged plank pose. So inhale. With the exhale, extend and press forward. Plank pose. Inhale, lift it back up. Use that left glute. Exhale, three-legged plank. Last one. Sweep it up. And plank pose. This time, extend back up three-legged dog bend the knee open up the hip maybe a couple bending and extending or rolling of the ankle getting a little warm here now and that is all you that is all your energy left toes reach back up square the hip inhale exhale knee to chest step to your runner's lunge left foot comes towards left thumb Set yourself up, make sure the feet are hip distance apart, and then pull the arms back, palms facing down. So remember, we're looking for that external rotation. You guys know the difference now that we tried both of them. Imagine there's a thread at the very top of your crown and then pulling it for the front of the room. Back right heel pressing for the back of your mat, left heel pressing into the ground for three, two, one inhale lift up find that crescent lunge slight tuck to that back knee making sure the pelvis is in the correct position inhale lift up extend your crescent lunge exhale dip and twist to the left inhale lift it up grow really tall hello son exhale dip and twist to the left couple more keep it moving in and out this time coming through center, exhale, dip and twist, hold. So you have to bend through both knees. Keep pressing down with that left heel. Notice if you're extending the chest forward, try to stack the shoulders on top of the hips. Nice, Camille. For three, two, one. Inhale, lift it back up. Exhale, dial right heel down, warrior two. And see Karina's awesome matching outfit here. Love it. Now we're going to hold in our warrior two to set this up. 
start to understand what is required from our bodies as well as our emotional body for this warrior pose. Left toes are facing forward. There's a bend in the knee. Notice if your hips are kind of pressing out to the back of the mat, try to tuck them right below your shoulder line. Inhale, lengthen through left leg, bring the arms up overhead, and exhale, warrior two. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, warrior. A couple more times, setting ourselves up for success here, preventing any and all future injuries. The next time you come back into that warrior two, it's going to be even better than when we started. Our body is welcoming it. Make sure we're not hyperextending through the knees. Find a gentle soft bend in there. Inhale, flip left palm, reverse your warrior. Feel that opening through the left side body. And exhale, cartwheel, hands down, runner's lunge. Hands plant, left foot steps back. Maybe you find that three-legged plank. You guys all did it on the other side. Hold with the inhale. And exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. This is a little pit stop here if you need a drink of water or a child's pose. Uh, one little thing I've been doing for myself on the field is bringing a hot beverage. So if you ever need a little bit of warmth in the morning, bringing a hot beverage can really help. Eventually, we'll all reconvene back into our downward facing dog. Continuing with a couple more standing postures and then finishing off with some nice juicy stretches. So come back to that downward facing dog. Imagine your neck growing even longer. Inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward. Exhale, walk or hop to the front of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Inhale, slowly lift it all the way up, arms finish it off, and exhale, hands to heart center. Finding the ground below you, feet are hip distance apart. Make sure that that right foot is on a sturdy part of the earth. Start by pulling left knee into the chest. We're gonna take 10 toe taps here. So left toes drop to the ground and then back up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Keep that left leg lifted and cross it over right leg, coming into a figure four pose. Couple options here might be staying lifted where you are or slowly sitting those hips back into that little chair pose. Feel that opening and external rotation through the left hip. Notice how that right foot is not standing still. It's always constantly finding these little teeny adjustments. That is balance. If you want to hinge all the way forward and bring the fingertips to the ground, you can. We'll hold here for about five breaths. Taking any variation that exists. Taking a very, very slow rising all the way back up to where we started without any set, sort of rush. Then taking the left knee back into the chest and extending it back for a warrior three pose. So keep that left foot flexed. Hands can stay at heart, extend forward or reach back. If they're reaching back, find the palms facing down. Dial that left hip down just a touch. Squeeze left glute for five, four, three, two, one. Landing in our pyramid pose. So both feet are on the ground, hip distance apart, toes face forward. Bringing your hands onto your hips. Inhale, lift the chin up. And with the exhale, hinging forward, coming into your pyramid pose. Fingertips can come to the ground, maybe it blocks. 
We have Karina going for a little arm variation behind the back. This pose should feel really welcome through the right side of your legs. After doing a lot of holding with that right foot balancing, now we're giving our right leg a little bit of a break, a little bit of a relaxation. Now bring some attention into the hips. Let's press the right hip forward, left hip, pull, excuse me, left hip forward, right hip pulls back. That way we get a nice even line through the hips. Eventually bringing your hands to the ground and then walking the fingertips over towards the left, opening up your stance, coming into a wide-legged forward fold. So you might need to open up your stance a little bit here, depending on how flexible you are. And then finding a forward fold that feels most welcome to you. So if you need to take a little rocking side to side or some skandasanas left and right, perhaps taking the Bikram style where you grab the outsides of the feet, pulling your crown forward. And rather than letting the hips press back, we actually want the hips to come a little bit forward, almost like you're going to do a somersault, but you don't. We'll be here for about three more breaths. Walking the fingers over to the right foot, coming into a runner's lunge. Lifting all the way up, crescent lunge, bringing your hands to your heart. Transferring the weight back into that right foot, pulling left knee into the chest. Interlace the hands on left knee or shin and pull it in towards the body. Opening left leg out to the left, right arm out to the right, coming into a dancing Shiva pose. Nice, Karina. If you like to extend that left leg long, you can go for grabbing the foot or ankle. If you grab that foot or ankle, it's very common to kind of want to shift your hips with it. Try to keep those hips stacked right below you for three, two, one, and release. Left foot comes next to right. Shake it up a little bit. <sighs> Inhale, arm circle sweep up. Exhale, hinging from the hips, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Hands plant, stepping back to your plank pose. Staying here, you can always skip your chaturanga if you're not feeling it. Inhale together. Exhale, slowly lower, find that chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths here, in and out. Feel how different one side of the body feels compared to the other side of the body. Eventually, inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward and exhale, walk or hop to the front of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, circle sweep all the way up. And exhale, pull the hands to the heart. Feel the length within the spine. Start to transfer some of the weight into the left foot. So check your surroundings. Make sure the left foot feels grounded and safe. And then pull right knee up towards the chest. Leave it hovering there. Hands at heart. Finding those 10 toe taps for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Right knee stays lifted. And then right ankle crosses over left leg. Figure 4. Again, choosing to stay here or maybe you start to find a little seat. Notice if the spine is rounding forward, you want to try to keep a flat back. So you got to send the hips back to do that. You're loading up your glutes. 
feel that external rotation through right hip. So we take those toe taps, you start to feel a little tension starting to build in the hip because it's working really hard to lift that leg. Now we're getting an opening, holding in some stillness. Slowly start to press yourself back up. Take your time to arrive, hands to heart. Right knee pulls into the chest. Right foot extends back, warrior three pose. Hands can stay at heart or palms can face the ground as they open up behind you. Personally, I like to keep my right foot flexed, but if you find pointing it gives you a little bit more activity and intelligence into your body, then point your foot. The reason why we want some activity in that foot is because it's going to help engage right glute. Keep that foot pressing back. Dial the right hip down for three, two, one. Right foot lands behind you, coming into that pyramid position. Both toes face forward, heels are on the ground. Hands to hip, inhale, tilt that chin up to the sky. Grow confident. Exhale, hinging forward. Finding that forward fold over left front leg. You can bring your hands to the floor or, excuse me, to the ground or to blocks. And we want to make sure we have a little bit of a softness through the knees. So we never want to hyperextend our knees. That creates a lot of tension in our joints. Rather than hyperextending through the knees, we want to rely on the muscles of the leg to hold us. So without hyperextending, you squeeze. Left hip pulling back, right hip pressing forward. Relax your head and neck. If your hands are in a different variation, start to bring them back to the ground and then walk your hands over towards the right coming into a wide-legged forward fold. So you might need to open up your stance a little bit and take any variation of a forward fold that you choose. So that could be just holding static. That could be some movements in those Skandasana poses. Maybe your hands are interlaced towards the lower back. going to be your pose for about three more breaths. Notice if your boat motor is on and you're thinking, what's next, what's next, what's next, where am I going to be, where am I going? And these waters are safe. The current will deliver you wherever you need to be. If your hands are in any other variation, start to bring them back down to your mat, walking the fingers over towards whichever foot is in front, your right foot, left foot, <laughs> sorry, it's hard keeping up with Karina, she's doing all types of twister moves, <laughs> hands plant, and then that right foot step, excuse me, left foot steps back to meet right plank pose. Now, this is our last push. Our last plank pose. Can we hold it just a little bit longer? Press those heels back. Crown reaches forward. So much so that the chest is actually going to pull forward as well. Hold for five. Squeeze for four. Steady for three, two, and one. Lower all the way to the ground. And I forgot a pose. <laughs> so pause here. Take a moment. You can bring one ear to the mat and then we'll pop back up for our last little balancing pose. I forgot we hit a dancing Shiva. Well, I guess I didn't forget because we're going to do it anyway. Bring the opposite ear to the mat to get an even stretch through the neck. I guess the universe just wants us to do one more plank. <laughs> Let's come into a reverse push-up. So bring the hands alongside the chest with the elbows tucked in. Tuck the toes under, breathe in, and with the exhale, press yourself up, plank pose. Send the hips up and back, downward facing dog. And inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward. 
and exhale, walk or hop to the front of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Inhale, circle, sweep all the way up, arms reach, and exhale, hands to heart. Transferring that weight back into the left foot, pulling right knee into the chest. So we're gonna find that last little chunk here. You can interlace the hands, squeeze in here, pulling that right knee in. And then right knee opens out to the right, left arm out to the left, dancing Shiva pose. If you wanna go for that leg extension, grab somewhere on the leg for support, either the foot, ankle, or shin, calf. Hold here, try to keep those hips right below shoulder line. Nice, Larry, for three, two, one. Land in your mountain pose, right foot next to left. Inhale, circle, sweep it all the way up. Maybe a little back bend here as you bring your gaze up, drop the head back and exhale, hinge from the hips, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands plant, stepping back to our second to last plank pose. Or I guess now our last plank pose. Press those heels back, keep that energy. Open up your fingers, press them into the earth for three, two, one and lower all the way down. Now you can let yourself relax one ear to the mat, arms alongside you. We finally completed our standing postures. Feel your heart beating into the earth. And the sun has started to poke its head out for us. going to be a beautiful day. Bringing the opposite ear to the mat to get an even stretch through your neck. And when we start with movement like this, we're removing all of the rough edges from the day. Preparing for more success. Most importantly, preparing for more receiving and giving. Coming into a quad stretch, bend the right knee, grab onto foot or ankle. If you like, you might use the left forearm underneath the forehead as a little pillow. Imagine that I'm grabbing your right thigh and knee and I'm gently pulling it towards the back of the mat. So you want to find that beautiful elongation through the quad. Release and take it to the other side, switching it out. Maybe this time the right forearm is used as a pillow. And then again, come to that sensation of my hands starting from the lower thigh and knee pulling it all back that way you can release from the hip all the way down the quad and release you can bend both knees windshield wiper left and right left and right Coming into a back strengthener pose, a full locus. So extend those legs long. Flip the palms to face down alongside of you. On the inhale, start to peel the chest and arms up off the ground. If it's okay for lower back, those feet fly as well. Keep the chin tucked, looking slightly at the ground. Imagine that thread is on your crown and I'm pulling it for the front. I have your feet and I'm pulling them towards the back. Feel that contrast. Lift up a little bit higher. Nice smile. And release all the way down. Beautiful smile, Constantina. Hard not to have a good time when we have a big smile like that in the room. <clears throat> if you like, you can bend the knees and windshield wiper again to release that lower back after 
holding those legs up. It can be a little tight. And then bringing the hands alongside of you, pressing your way up into a table pose. Maybe you find that reverse push up one more time. Knees are on the ground. Take some cat and cows, maybe some child pose or circling of the hips, shaking of the head, yes and no. We'll find a stretch through the arms. So take the knife edge side of the right hand, so that pinky edge side, and extend it forward as you twist over and look over left shoulder. Some people might prefer to drop down into the left forearm or keep that hand planted so you can use it as a way to open up the chest. Start to come back to center. We'll take it to the other side. So this time the pinky edge of the left side reaches forward. You start to gaze and turn over right shoulder. Very gentle twisting and getting a tremendous stretch through the armpit. Coming back to your table pose. Our next location will be pigeon. So if you like to take it reclined, you can turn onto your back. If you wanna come for a prone pigeon, tuck the toes under, lift hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg reaches up to the sky and exhale, right knee pulls towards right wrist. The important alignment is that that right thigh is parallel to the long edge of the mat. So if you look at Karina here, you can see that this right thigh is parallel to the long edge of her mat. If you need a block underneath right glute for comfortability of the hips, you can take that variation. If you want to come into a deer pose, you can do that as well by bending the left knee and opening it out towards the left. This is your opportunity to take a moment to soften into this pose. So again, coming back to this idea of letting your motor turn off. So in this case, your motor might be the mind kind of telling you where to go and letting the current take you into this pigeon pose. And that is your breath. So each exhale can be a softening and surrendering into this posture. Let everything around you become part of your experience. Feel the magic that is this outdoor practice. And just when you think you can't become any more soft or any more relaxed, find one more exhale. In the same way we created our heat in the body to start class. Now we have the opportunity to soften into the last couple postures. Preparing to slowly transition to the other side by propping yourself up. Finding a downward facing dog to even it out or any other variation or transition that you choose. Eventually left leg sweeps up long and then left knee pulls towards left wrist. Again, the thigh is going to match the parallel long edge of your mat. You can bring a block underneath left glute or perhaps open right knee out to the right. And then you soften into this.
take this opportunity to allow the exhale to relax you completely. the mind float away, come back, slowly propping yourself back up, we'll transition to laying down on our back, so if you want to extend into your downward facing dog to get one more dog in and then eventually laying all the way down i find when you lay down so the head is facing the front of your mat and the feet are the back of your mat that way the audio still sounds good for you guys once you lay all the way down find a full body stretch reaching the arms up overhead And then pulling the knees into the chest, giving yourself a squeeze, perhaps a little sway, side to side. You can also bring the hands on the knees and let the knees roll away from the chest and back in a couple times and then in the opposite rotation. And then dropping the soles of the feet onto the earth, lifting the hips up and then dropping them over towards the right side of your mat, letting the knees rock over to the left side of your mat. So coming into a reclining twist. And taking any variation that feels best for you. So if you choose to change it up a little bit, that's more than welcome. A twist like this is accessing some of our uh, digestive system. So it's very common to feel some bubbles releasing. We're also wringing out the spine. Notice how the longer you stay in this pose, the more you can actually sink into it. Eventually letting the knees come back to center and then lifting the hips up, dropping them over towards the left, knees over towards the right. So coming into that opposite twist. Again, give your body a chance to really soften into this and allow it to be natural and welcome. Feel how the heart radiates open. The longer you stay in it, the more of an opportunity you have with each exhale to surrender. Slowly returning back to center, bringing the soles of the feet together and letting the knees flop out to the outer edges of your mat consider placing blocks underneath the knees for a little extra cushion and support. 
feel the external rotation of the hips open. Perhaps you bring the hands over your belly or lower abdomen. Now that the sun's out, our eyes are closed, yet there is this golden red light. What can you find within that closed eye? Choosing to stay here or take any last postures of your choice. And then we will find our final resting pose when you're ready. Whatever suits you. Perhaps utilizing any blocks or blankets. Let a cleansing breath over you. Taking it all in. And once again, feeling yourself floating in that boat. In safe waters. Allowing the power of the current to create your map. Some days the water might be a little choppy and the current might take you somewhere that you weren't expecting. But there is a reason for that. Some days the water might be still and the current might be non-existent. You might not go anywhere. This allows you to tune into your intuition. And tune into your soul. You're so much more intelligent than just our minds. We need to give credit to this ancient process that is a living, breathing body. And at times it might seem like this ancient body and this society clash But it is our divine jobs to find that balance. As your breath begins to expand, start to wiggle the toes and the fingers. Maybe a gentle rocking of the head from side to side. Perhaps pulling the knees into the chest, giving yourself a little squeeze or any other movements that start to reawaken you.
over the next four to five breaths, slowly lifting yourself back up into a seated position. Once there, bringing your hands over your heart. May you continue to let your boat be carried wherever it needs to go without any force. May you continue to expand what it means to move and be free. Now to each other we bow our heads and say, Namaste. Thank you guys so much for being here. Another Victory Field class for Mystic Fitness. And we will see you guys tomorrow morning for Cat's class at 8 a.m. And keep in mind that next Monday, all of these classes, uh, week morning and uh, Saturday and Sunday, will turn to 9 a.m. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>